Hello, my name is Craig Prawl. I'm one of the community leaders in the Verizon Fios community forums. Although Verizon hosts these forums on their website, as the disclaimer video mentioned, uh, community leaders and customers like you create these videos. Uh, that's also true for the majority of the posts that you find in the forums themselves, although they do have Verizon moderators uh, in those forums. Uh, today what I'd like to talk about is how to move the Verizon Fios uh, Quantum Gateway router from one location to another within your residence. So the first thing you need to know is there's really nothing particularly special about the current location of your router. Uh, generally, what uh, the original installer will do is put the router as close as they can to where the ONT is either outside your house or where the fiber comes inside your house and connects to the ONT there. But you may find out at some point that where it's currently located just doesn't work out, isn't working out for you anymore. Or maybe you need the room that it's in for some other reason. And so you've decided that you're going to move uh, from this current location, which is, at least in my made up uh, floor plan is bedroom two, you're going to move it to another location because you've just bought a brand new shiny uh, piece of equipment that you want to be able to use on your wireless network. And that would be the brand new shiny PS5 that you've decided to put in the living room. So soon after getting your new PlayStation 5 installed, you realize that the wireless network, especially the 5 gigahertz band, isn't penetrating uh, the house well enough from a corner location. So you decide that to relocate the router to the more central location in a new bedroom because that'll get you a lot better uh, 5 gigahertz penetration and get you a lot closer. So I'm going to talk about three of the variations that you can get after the, the fiber reaches the ONT. Um, and that's, you know, these all depend on exactly what kind of services you're signed up for, but I'm going to talk about three fairly common uh, types of service deliveries. The first one is uh, where all services are delivered via coax, and this is sort of the oldest, the old guard, if you will, uh, how services are delivered to your house, where internet and, if you have it, yeah, Fios TV all came over the coax cable from the ONT. So fiber to the ONT and then coax into your house and, or fiber to the ONT in your house if that's what it is, but then coax throughout the rest of your house. A more modern version of that, especially if you have higher speed Ethernet because there's a limitation on how fast you can run at least uh, Verizon's version of Ethernet over coax. Uh, and any speeds over 100 megabit per second require pretty much that you have Internet delivered over Ethernet. And I think that's also pretty much the standard now, even if you get lower speed services than below 100 megabits per second. Now, for my discussion, at least initially, I'm going to assume this is without Fios TV service. So the last version is Internet delivered over Ethernet, and you have Fios TV service so that the live video is still coming in over coax to the set-top boxes. The first thing we're going to look at is Internet service coming through the coax. I'm going to start off by saying this is my understanding of how the Verizon system works. If you ask a Verizon uh, network person, they may have a much better idea of how it actually works. I think I have a pretty close idea, but I might not be completely correct. So uh, it's not Verizon's fault if I get something wrong here. And so we start off uh, again with a network distribution hub of fiber. Uh, one of those fibers will uh, go to your house and go to the ONT, where the ONT comes in a couple of varieties. Um, Mine is actually a white box that sits outside my house, and from there, uh, the services that I get come inside through the house. Uh, another version is a small black box, more the size of a book, or a large book anyway, um, maybe even the size of a small, or an old-style laptop uh, that goes inside your house, and the fiber actually comes into the house and goes into that inside the residence instead of outside. Mine happens to be outside. Um, but the job of the ONT in, in any case is to split up the services that you are getting uh, from the fiber into, uh, in this case, coax for your internet and your live video, and if you have phone service, into RJ11 telephone wire. Now I'm going to more or less ignore the RJ11 and, and plain old telephone service um, type of connection because it really doesn't change regardless of what type of internet service you are and even if you are moving your router you're probably not moving this telephone wire uh, if you are it's it's a lot simpler to move this telephone wire so I'm going to concentrate on uh, the coax over um, the coax version of internet service uh, the coax coming into your house has the video signal for your set-top boxes um, so the actual live video it also has um, voice uh, video on demand if you have a video on demand stream coming in it also has the guide data and, and your regular just 
plain uh, internet service. And at some point that goes into a splitter and, and from that splitter the, the goes and connects to the set-top box and to your router. And what, a, what's happening there is the coax cable is actually split, split into a, channels on a number of different frequency ranges. And the lower frequency ranges um, and I, I have here below 900 megahertz and that's my belief. I'm not sure if that's an exact number or not. Uh, is that that's where the live video streams come in. So your regular television channels that you get on your set-top boxes come in here. Um, digital uh, video uh, channels uh, I think are also on the lower mega, uh, lower frequency ranges. I'm not exactly sure. I think they're still below 900 megahertz, but I'm not absolutely sure of that. But what does happen is the WAN signal, or essentially the wide area network from the internet, that hasn't been filtered through the firewall comes in about uh, 1000 megahertz in that frequency range of, of about 50 megahertz wide I believe it is. That goes into the router it gets filtered by the router as it's supposed to be the router then turns that around and puts it out on the LAN ports on the router and also puts it out on the MOCA LAN frequencies. So the, the coax is actually carrying two different uh, LANs or two different types of internet. The internet that's coming from the outside that hasn't been filtered yet or the internet that's coming out of the, you know, out of your service and going back to the internet at large and the internet service that has already been filtered and is going to devices inside your house coming in on the LAN. Okay, so back to this picture. Um, so what happens here is the coax comes in, it has internet on it, it splits out, goes into the router the router takes it off the MOCA WAN frequencies, puts it, it filters it, and if it's appropriate, it should be passed on to the, to the devices inside your house, it puts it on the MOCA LAN. So it'll go back out through the splitter and actually go into uh, the set-top box from there. And that's how you get your guide information, that's how your video on demand streams are, are actually done. Um, regular internet that you use for your right, everyday browsing and that sort of thing is also out here. It's also on the WAN. It gets filtered the same way. It gets put out on these ports. So uh, your internal internet, your inside LAN, is actually on these four ports and also on the, the MOCA LAN that's going to your set-top box. We're going to go take a look at uh, internet service coming through your Ethernet, through an Ethernet cable rather than coax. Um, in this case I'm not showing a Fios TV service and this is actually not that unusual now for people who don't get Fios TV who basically just stream all their video either through Hulu, Hulu or uh, YouTube TV or YouTube. Um, what happens in this case is rather than having coax cable come in, everything is pretty much the same to begin with. You have a fiber coming into the ONT. Again, the ONT could be outside or inside. Uh, its job is still to split out fiber, uh, the internet from the fiber, but in this case it's putting it out over an RJ45 Ethernet cable that goes into the WAN port on, on your uh, router, whereas in the coax case this WAN port was not being used at all. The router still does the same job, which is to filter the traffic coming in from the internet at large, the internet outside, on the wide area network, decide what should be delivered to devices inside your network or what traffic from devices inside your network should go back out on the wide area network, the regular internet, or the wider internet. And so it, it basically was going to move, uh, filter things from this port to any of these LAN ports. And also, I, I think I guess I've bothered, I haven't bothered to mention now, it also uh, puts it out on your wireless LAN uh, at the same time. Okay. Now, Newer versions of uh, Fios installations, or if you have uh, internet service that's 100 megabits per second or more, almost always, and actually if it's more than 100 megabits per second, will always use an e Ethernet cable uh, because the uh, version of coax, or the version of Mocha being supported by Verizon, uh, doesn't actually support anything uh, in that that really doesn't support 100 megabit per second Ethernet. Um, MOCA, the MOCA standards, at least the newer ones, do support that, but the equipment that's out there uh, from Verizon is of varying ages and most of it doesn't support the higher speeds. So to be consistent, they just switch to using an Ethernet cable for higher speed uh, connections. Okay, so the final variation we're going to look at is uh, internet service that you're receiving through Ethernet. So probably internet service that's 100 megabytes per second or greater. 
uh, but you actually also do get Fios TV service. So this is sort of a combination of both the coax uh, version and the internet uh, only version. It starts off the same. Uh, you get your service comes from a network distribution hub over a fiber optic cable into your ONT and the ONT splits it out just as before except this time it's putting your internet traffic on an RJ45 to cable rather than a coax cable as in the first case that we looked at. Um, what that means is that in this case the WAN port which is receiving traffic from the outside essentially from the wide area network of the internet is responsible for filtering everything that goes on the LAN ports on the inside but it also converts uh, the signal to after it's filtered to the LAN MOCA or the MOCA LAN version on the, the, the actual coax cable and that goes into the splitter goes to your set-top boxes and again that's how you get your video on demand uh, stream and how you get your guides uh, to your set-top boxes. Um, also any clicks that you make that need to go back like saying that you want to start a video on demand stream will come out of your set-top box, go through the splitter, into the coax cable, into the router. The router will decide that it, you know, it should be routed or not, and assuming that it is and probably would be in that case, puts it on the Ethernet cable, goes out through the ONT, into the fiber, and back to Verizon servers to let it know to start up a video stream, uh, a video on demand stream to come back in through the fiber. Which one of the things to notice is that you still need the splitter uh, but it's not doing exactly the same job before. The, there is no uh, MOCA WAN si service uh, giving you an Ethernet signal in this case. That, that, that frequency just is not used. Instead, the Internet traffic is coming over this uh, for e Ethernet cable, and then the router is converting it in here to the MOCA LAN uh, signal that you need to go to the set-top boxes. Okay, so now that we've looked at uh, several variations on how the Fios service uh, might be installed in your residence, I hope you're already starting to get some ideas about uh, what might be involved with moving your particular uh, router. Now, what makes doing a video like this really hard is it's difficult to cover every contingency. Uh, what I've talked about are ways that I've actually seen Fios service installed in various people's homes, including my own. Uh, hopefully, th this covers the basics. Uh, but what I do want to do in this part of the video is to try and go back to the variations that I've talked about and more concretely uh, nail down what's involved with moving each of those, both the router and each of those variations. Okay, so here's an example of a, what a typical splitter looks like. Um, and let's say that in our case, this is the coax that's coming in from the ONT. And it comes into a splitter that's fairly near your router one of these leads is going to go off to the router itself because you remember the router's doing the getting the internet on the WAN MOCA WAN that's on the outside here filtering it back into and putting it back on MOCA LAN which is going to go back out to the rest of the house also your live video stream is going to the rest of the house it's actually going to the router too but the router doesn't really do much with it um, so if you have a splitter there you're going to want to make sure that you you know take that splitter with you you're going to need it possibly or probably at your current next location uh, but what you're going to do is take the the coax that's coming from the ONT and somehow connect it to the coax that's going to the rest of the house so you're going to take the coax cable that's going with the router with the router or going to the router with the router and then join it together here with what I have here is just a little RF connector or a little coax connector uh, you can get these fairly cheap. They're only like four or five dollars, uh, maybe maybe seven or eight, depending on where you get yours. Uh, the most important part is to make sure they pass at least two gigahertz of of signal frequency, and even better is to get three gigahertz. And those three gigahertz ones don't really cost uh, noticeably more than the than any of the other ones. Okay, so let's look at this uh, against the original floor plan that I was using as an example uh, after the equipment has been moved and what it looks like. So if you remember the original floor plan I had, the equipment was in here along with a desk and a computer, the splitter was in here. Um, what I propose is if you don't need the splitter for this, or if you don't need a, another uh, second coax in this room for, let's say, another set-top box is going to remain here, you put a coax coupler in, as is shown in this diagram. So you have the, the uh, fiber goes into the ONT, and from that you're getting a coax cable. You've installed a new coax coupler that's at least 2 or 3 gigahertz in signal uh, width as far as what it passes. And then that co then you've coupled it to the coax that goes back into the wall so that 
basically you're going to show it going to the rest of the house. Now you probably, if the, if the house was wired for coax in every room, there are splitters at various locations, either in the attic, in the garage, or maybe uh, in the wall or in a closet that, that are there. Uh, if you need, uh, for example, in this bedroom, if you're going to have a set-top box in here, you'd still need a splitter because you're going to need one wire that goes from the coax to the set-top box and a split out to have a second wire that goes back in essentially to the wall so that it can go to the rest of the house. So the name of the game here is to make sure that you have continuity from for this signal all the way through your house uh, so that it doesn't so that you haven't broken it any place. Now what, what you've done is you've moved your computer and, and the G1100 router to this room and if there's a set top box here that's why you're going to need that uh, splitter uh, because you're going to need to split the signal off that's coming into the room uh, and uh, half of our part of it's going to go back to the to the router the same location into the coax port and the other part would go to the set top box so let's look, run through this again more, really fast have the ONT the coax is coming into your house it used to actually have a, a co splitter in here and kind of terminate in this room um, going to your computer and your uh, router but now you've uh, essentially connected the, the cable together to have it join to the rest of the house uh, that's going to go running through the house and, and actually will go out probably in several locations but one of them is going to be in the second uh, new bedroom office the bedroom four office and at that point you may or may not need a splitter uh, the one that you've taken if you don't have a set-top box in the room and the and the sig and the coax has been split somewhere else like in the attic in the basement as I mentioned before uh, you don't need the splitter you simply need either a coax coupler or just a longer cable for for the wall connection to go into the back of the router because remember the router still needs to do its job of getting the internet traffic that's on the uh, Mocha WAN filtering it so that essentially you know, filtering out packets that don't belong inside your house um, filtering that and putting uh, the remainder of it either also on, on the Ethernet ports here for devices that are in your house onto the wireless LAN uh, that's not really pictured here uh, so that you can get wireless signal in your house and it also puts it on the Mocha LAN, which goes again back out on the coax cable in a different frequency through the splitter and goes to your set-top box so that you can get your video on demand and your guide information. Okay, so that's pretty much what you need to do. Um, how exactly you do this will vary, of course, depending on what you have. But the, the main thing to keep in mind, though, is if, if you have coax coming into your house and you have your Ethernet and your video live video on that, Whatever you do, you need to make sure that that continues on throughout your house, and that's the most important part that I would like to get across here. There are many ways you can do that, uh, and this is an example of one of those. So moving uh, Ethernet-only service is similar to moving coax service in that you have a cable that needs to be moved, uh, but it is actually quite a bit different when it comes to reality. Where you, know, you still have fiber coming from the uh, neighborhood distribution hub to your ONT uh, and then it's an RJ45 Ethernet cable going to the Ethernet port on the WAN port on your router. Uh, the difference here is for coax maintaining the continuity is simple. Uh, really all you need to do is get a splitter or some sort of a joiner, some cables to uh, a couple of the cable coming from your, your ONT, that coax cable, to the coax cable that runs throughout the rest of your house and you're pretty much done. Um, the reason why that works is the coax cable actually can run multiple types of Ethernet over the same physical cable by separating by different frequencies. So the, the internet, a wide area network frequencies that, are, that carry things from outside your residence are in one set of frequencies. The internal traffic from one device to another or from your devices out to the internet or coming in from the internet is actually carried on a separate set of frequencies called the Mocha, Wa Mocha LAN uh, and that can all be done on the same on, on the same piece of cable. Uh, Ethernet cable is all digital. It doesn't have a concept of frequencies. Uh, they could actually do some some interesting things if they wished to put multiple la uh, LANs on the same Ethernet cable but uh, that, that complicates things. Uh, and they do not. So what happens is that when you move this cable, you can use something s similar to a coax coupler, an Ethernet cable coupler, 
to uh, join two pieces of cable together, but you still need to keep that cable physically separate from all the other cables that you might have in your house that haven't uh, that are in for your LAN, because you want this cable to be uh, not joined to any other cable, not uh, used by anything else until it gets to the router, gets into the router, and the wire and the firewall has a chance to uh, do what it does for you, which is to repackage and and filter the traffic coming from the internet out into the LAN ports here, also to your wireless network port, and uh, well, as we'll talk about a little later, if you have coax uh, for your set-top boxes, it actually puts it out on the coax port as well. So this is a photo of uh, an Ethernet joining uh, Ethernet coupler that I actually have in my wiring closet. Uh, the FIO service that I get, which is over Ethernet, um, has a cable coming in from the outside ONT, but it's only two or three feet long after it gets inside their ho my house. And uh, my router is actually about 15 or 20 feet away. Um, it could be just as well across the house, but what this little device lets me do is connect the cable coming from outside to a longer cable, essentially making it into one long cable for all practical purposes. Now, again, this, this isn't a switch, it isn't a router, it isn't a hub. It doesn't do any kind of routing. It doesn't do anything except literally connect two pieces of cable together, uh, wire by wire. Um, so it's good for that, and it isn't good for just about anything else. But if you're moving your internet service and you need to get some distance on your cable or route your own cables and put your own connectors on it and connect it to the existing cable, you can use a, a coupler like this to do it. And this is good for a, up to about 100 feet. Um, or I should say you can connect a, a cable to it for a, about 100 feet, um, possibly up to 150 feet. The, the actual spec says you can go 100 meters, but in what I found in practice is that you tend to get issues if you go much over 100, 100 feet or about 30 or 40 meters. Um, if you need to do something like that, then you need to start getting into specialized devices that can be used to retransmit and reamplify uh, Ethernet connections. Um, that's beyond the scope of what I want to talk about in this um, video, uh, but where you can get some help on that is we start looking up uh, how people have implemented uh, IP uh, cameras, internet protocol cameras, uh, devices that they've actually put a uh, considerable distance from the house, in some cases several hundred feet, uh, using specialized devices that, that let you do that. Uh, I, you could look up videos on the internet on how that's done. But this is, this is a way to do it. Uh, for most houses, this will be sufficient uh, if you just need to get your cable connected to what's already there and, and run it a bit longer. Again, don't use a switch, don't use a hub. You just want to, something that physically connects two pieces of the cable together without anything uh, happening to it, without, any, without trying to help it in any way. The final variation that I was talking about was essentially a combination of the first two where you have internet service coming over ethernet cable from your ONT but you've also subscribed to the Verizon uh, Fios TV service, so your your video, or at least your live video, is coming through coax and getting distributed throughout the house. So your internet traffic, you know, all your, uh, including video on demand and your guide information, is coming over the cable, the RJ45 cable from the ONT. Live video is coming through the coax. So as you might imagine, uh, moving the router in this case is essentially a combination of the first two. You have to move the coax cable the same way you do before. You can remove the splitter. Uh, if the coax comes in from the ONT as a separate cable and you have a wall jack that connects your coax to the rest of the house, you probably can literally just take the cable off the back of the router and connect it to the wall. Uh, you may not even need a, a, a coupler or a splitter at that point. You may be able to direct, get it right, uh, directly in there. Uh, the as I mentioned before, the name of the game is to make sure that this connection from the ONT is connected to the rest of the house. And whatever makes that happen is probably good. The Ethernet cable, of course, is still kind of a special case. Uh, you need to move it, either using a coupler or a longer cable from the ONT or something that effect. But that cable does need to be maintained separately from any other cables you have in your house because it needs to go directly into the WAN port of the router and nowhere else. So. Basically, you put those two together and you can move your router. It's, it's a little more complicated because there's a couple things to do, but it's really just a combination of the first two. 
So as you probably figured out by listening to this very video, there's quite a few variations on how FISO equipment gets installed in various residences. And there's because of that, there's quite a few variations on what it takes to move the router. Uh, if this video hasn't actually answered your particular situation or hasn't addressed your particular situation, uh, please feel free to post a, a question in the forums, uh, Verizon Fios community forums, at forums.verizon.com. Uh, specific questions about moving a router or the Fios internet are best placed in the internet, uh, sub essentially subgroup, subtopic, uh, and there's a inside of that there's a Fios subtopic. Uh, and that's the best place for those sort of questions. But as you look around, you'll also notice there's good places for things like Fios TV and other uh, questions related to Fios service. So I hope you found this video useful, and I'd like to thank you at this time for listening.